Mental Health Champions, we are checking in on Saturday this week, and I'm excited to bring on someone I met in the other side of my work. I'm in podcasts and I'm in writing. I met Renz on a writing call just last week. We reconnected and I learned a little more on his story. I knew how much value he could bring to you here on a mental health break. So Renz, thank you for taking some time to stop by. Vince, it's a pleasure to be here, brother. I'm excited to kick things off. Everyone, remember to check out our show partner, Tampa Counseling and Wellness. They've launched a bunch of new services so they can help more people. Be sure to head to tampacw.com if you're looking for someone to talk to today. And for today, I get to talk to Renz. I'm real excited about this. He's got a great book that I'm sure will come up in this conversation today as it has a mental health tie to it. But Renz, I always start the show with asking our guests to share their mental health journey, starting anywhere you feel comfortable. Sure. So <laughs> my time with therapy started pretty early on and then took a giant break. What happened was I learned how to read pretty much on my own when I was about two and a half years old. Obviously, my parents read to me. My godfather bought me blocked, but they took me out uh, in a, on a drive. And apparently I was reading the stop signs and I was reading like the, the store signs and all of that. Then they took me to uh, a psychologist because right around that time, my father took me to see my grandfather's grave for the first time and explained to me, oh, that's my dad. He's in there for eternity. My My family's Catholic, right? So uh, apparently I woke up two nights later screaming, I don't want my father to spend eternity in a box. So a couple of those two events together and they took me there. Um, and I've always had this problem with the concept of, of eternity, right? Because of it, but also because of it, a lot of expectations were placed on my parents from me. Uh, I would come home with like a 95. Imagine an eight-year-old coming home with a 95 and my dad uh, would be there and he would say, were you sick? Were you emotionally distraught? I'm translating from Spanish. And I said, no, why? He's like, what could you have done differently to get the five points you needed to get a hundred on this test? So I would come home with a hundred and he would say, were you sick? <laughs> were you emotionally distraught? Uh, I see here that you chose not to answer two extra credit questions. Son, God punishes pride. If you want 100, study for 200. And because of that, I mean, I don't, and again, my dad was a great guy. He just, uh, there's, there's an addendum to the story, but growing up, it was a bit tough. And it, I began to think my worth, my value was what I could do, what I could achieve instead of just being loved for who I am. And uh, it definitely helped develop a fixed mindset that I had to overcome with fitness. I think fitness is what told me to have a growth mindset, how to be better than not somebody else, but yourself every day. And that was kind of the beginning with my, my journey with struggling with some mental health issues. I love what you said there. And I always say this competing with yourself. And that's something, of course, exercise plays a role in exercise for me is my big mental health boost every day. If I don't get my exercise in, I normally don't think clearly and I'm not just not myself. So I really like how you emphasize that. Gao, I want to shift to the writing part because that's how we met. And for me, writing's always been very therapeutic, even if I didn't realize what it was doing at first, because I didn't start writing for a mental health benefit. I wasn't always a journaler at first. I started writing the books and I learned that my stress would go down. All of these great things would happen when I write, boosting my mental health. I want to ask if you feel the same about your writing, and then we'll talk a little bit about your book. In a way, writing is a form of therapy. My uh, my father passed from pancreatic cancer about three years ago, and um, I started writing again. I wrote poetry before. I, I stopped for a variety of reasons, but I started writing again because there was a I know you and I have talked about it offline, but for the benefit of, of your listeners, I there was a period in my life where I thought life had stopped giving me things and started taking them away, which makes no logical sense. You and I just met. This could be a, a good friendship moving forward. Life continues to give me things. But um, I lost my father, my dog, my grandmother, my 
cousin who was my same age, my little cousin, my best friend's mom, et cetera. The relationship I thought was going to turn into marriage. It was just this, this very difficult trying time in my life, even though I was being very successful professionally. And um, it got to the point where I just wanted to document, even if thematically, right? Not literally, but thematically document these experiences so that my these people would live on um and anybody who read it would love them a bit as well the way that i love them yeah and it's really an incredible piece of literature he's put out there what's the name of that book and where can everybody find it <laughs> the book is called still uh it's still it's a collection of poetry you can find it on amazon barnes and noble books and books if you're uh in miami uh or south florida as well as some local stores like Dalazine, but definitely online. You can find it there. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Well, other than writing, we touched on exercise. Are there anything, are there anything else? Uh, it's nice and stumbly this morning. Is there anything else that you do to take care of your mental health that really works for you that we could pay forward to our audience? Yeah, uh, exercise is a big part of it um, because I was obese when I was a kid. I weighed about 240 pounds when I was 12. And uh, because of that, I still have some sort of body dysmorphia. If anybody looks at me and says, hey, you're fit in my mind, I'm like, you're wrong. You're completely wrong, which is I stopped punishing myself for thinking that way. And now I just challenge it. Right. I, I'm OK. That's my initial thought. And then I challenge it. Have I been putting in the reps? Have I been consistent with my workout, uh, et cetera? Another thing that I like to do is travel. Um, I travel a significant amount. I'm lucky enough that I could leave up to a month or so, a year. Um, very fortunate to do that. And I love to immerse myself in different cultures. It's also great because when I travel, nobody knows my name. Nobody expects anything from me. And I could just be whatever version of myself I am that day without expectations. Um, that's very important to me. And, you know, I love playing guitar, singing, creating, going out. I'm obsessed with... Um, you know, restaurants, <laughs> I think I'm an amateur foodie. Uh, but anything that's just about creation really helps me, uh, really helps me when I'm stressed or when I'm not feeling my best. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. Everyone, I always, as you know, try to bring as many different mental health tips and tools that I can get as every, what works for some doesn't work for everyone. Some people don't like exercise, but I always challenge everyone to just take a walk. If, ex if heavy lifting and all those things in the gym are, is not for you, Totally fine going outside in nature. I love getting the sunlight, natural noises, taking all of it in uh, always helps me reset in the middle of the day. It's one of my late afternoon activities, but we've discussed a lot. We've heard about your journey, this awesome book that you've came out with to create a legacy for your family, some mental health tips you can offer. Now, before we sign off here, Renz, is there anything else you want to shed light on relating to mental health? Anything else going on in the world that you want to shed awareness on? Sure. Um, I'd like to give uh, the the addendum to the story about my dad, because I want to give cool. a full picture. Yeah. When before he passed, about a couple of weeks before he passed, I was outside doing yoga. Um, and he uh, he was incredibly Catholic, right? Like very, very Catholic. So he called me over and asked me or told me he was concerned about my immortal soul because I was doing this thing that was not Catholic. And I told him, look, dad, this is, um, uh, yoga helps me be in the moment. Uh, my mind is always on the future. It helps me be uncomfortable in the now, uh, and being good with that discomfort. And it also, I was in a car crash and it helped me regain a lot of mobility, uh, in my knees, which I was able to run marathons again, et cetera. Awesome. But then we had a conversation that day, uh, stemming from that. And he told me, uh, and I think I've mentioned this to you as well. Sometimes you, you, you hear something that you never knew you needed to hear. Right. And he told me, you know, I know I made you feel like you weren't good enough growing up and I'm sorry, which he had never said, right. Never wow. said, I'm sorry. He always, he would always laugh about, look how good you turned out. Um, and he said, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm your father. I know you. And I know that you would never be happy not giving a hundred percent. And while I still have therapy bills to pay and I still have to engage in it and I still have some issues that I have to do, it was it was the first time I saw my father as a child who wouldn't be noticed in his house unless he excelled in front of his brothers. And the reason I share this is 
I wanted the readers not to see my story, but his, because he went from point A mm -hmm. to developing the language to be able to express that in point B. So mental health is a journey that take us takes us through so many different experiences and different difficulties. And just remember that despite the adversities, you can overcome, you can adapt. And that's one of the last lessons my father taught me. Well, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. everyone out there. This is a guy you want to get to know. Where can we say hello to you online? You can find me on my Instagram account, Lrenz, a, um, at E-L-R-E-N-Z. Also, my name, dot com, Renzo del Castillo dot com. I'm sure you might put it on your show notes, uh, is the author website. And LinkedIn definitely have a big presence because <laughs> I'm an executive outside of, uh, outside of the arts. So uh, just look for me there. Great. Thank you for sharing. Everyone, be sure to go say hello. And the show is at a mental health break on all social media. We are at Vincent A. Lancey on YouTube. Be sure to follow us there and catch some video clips from this show in the coming weeks. And with that, we are signing off here, kicking off your Saturday. Remember, you are not alone. Renz, thank you so much. Thank you, Vince. I really appreciate it.